So the day I got the news of Jane's passing, my heart shattered into a million pieces. Honestly, a piece of my soul died. Although, yes, I'd been expecting it from the beginning of the year, but nothing could fully prepare me to not get to have a final goodbye to my best friend. When James and I met back in 2013, I was just some boy crazy, 18 year old American girl who just happened to stumble across this really attractive guy on Instagram and Facebook who just happened to have the same illness as me, cystic fibrosis. I want to talk about all the fun and lighthearted parts of our friendship and all that entailed over the years from our five hour long FaceTime dates and our Snapchat streaks and talking about all the music that we both liked and had in common. And then his favorite conversation, which was talking about how much of a prude I am compared to girls over in his country, just from cultural differences, basically. Um, we, we would dream about the day that CF would be cured, of course, and how we would go visit each other. And he would tell me often that if it wasn't for the distance and us both having CF, that he would marry me in an instant. All talk, I'm sure. <laughs> Without a doubt. I'm sure, it was all talk. But he truly was the one that I would turn to when anything bad would happen. And I was that for him. I remember the calls I got after his cousin died and then after his grand died and his dad. The hundreds of times he dislocated his damn jaw. Then his stomach surgeries and all the pain. All I wanted was for him to know that he wasn't alone. And he was there for me in all my darkest moments. And he was always the least judgmental person and the most supportive person in my corner, without a doubt, every time. We understood what each other went through on a daily basis and just things that no one else could really understand. <laughs> like what living with CF looks like and feels like on a daily basis. What it's like to want to go out and be social with your friends but you're too sick so you have to stay in, or the extended hospital stays. Just no one could really understand. The dark thoughts of having a shortened life expectancy hanging over your head, even if you do everything the doctors tell you to a T, the fact that's still hanging over your head and most likely a reality. We just understood and validated each other in ways that our family and friends would try their best. They really would. But they could never understand. They never fully could. But what's always blown my mind about James is even though he was given a very shitty cards, just hand at life, that's all there is to it. But despite all that, he loved so deeply to a fault. Like even to the point where it would hurt him, he would just love everyone. And he cared, he genuinely cared about people. People that he had no business even caring about. People he didn't know, people he never would know. People like, not just even other CF people, but like my family and my friends and my now husband, like he would ask about them and genuinely want to know how these people are doing. And as time goes on and the more people I talk to about him, I realized he was like this with everybody. He just genuinely cared about people and was a people person. He also just wouldn't accept pity or wallow in his sickness or his pain. And I mean, the kid worked this job that he had no business working anymore, essentially until his last days. Now that, as a naturally lazy person, that just amazes me to like, a whole other degree um, and I just I admire the hell out of that as we all celebrate his life and we mourn his loss of life and mourn the fact that our lives are not going to be the same without him here I just want everyone to remember why we're here today and it's because cystic fibrosis is just a brutal illness and it takes one life after another after another James was pretty popular amongst the CF community, and he brought a lot of people together. We actually have a uh, 
CF group chat on Snapchat called Salty Snaps, and he brought a lot of people into that group chat and introduced us, where now we talk every day. Because he was just like, he, people like him. People have always liked him. <laughs> he was good at making friends. That's all there is to it. But all the, unfortunately, he wasn't able to receive the best medical care, whether if that was with medications or devices. But he was always so excited and so happy for me and others in the States who were able to have these opportunities to get new advancements in medications and treatments it, with the hopes that one day it would be able to come and be available in the UK. But he was never bitter about it. He was always very happy and very supportive. And I just hate that he was never able to see the things that are coming in the future. In fact, his, James's health declined really quick. Over just the span of a couple years, he went from running every day and playing football with his friends and having a like relatively high lung function to where we are today. So I just want everyone to remember, and as we're here for James Thompson, I just want everyone to remember all the thousands of people in the UK and in the US living with cystic fibrosis. And please, in his honor, just consider donating. If you're in the UK, consider donating to the CF Trust in the States, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, just so no other families, lovers, and friends have to bury their loved ones at such a young age. James, I just have to tell you that I freaking love you. I always have and I always will. I promise I'll watch Grey's Anatomy and I'll visit Scotland one day and I'll remember your smile every time that the 1975 comes on. But thank you for being my constant for all these years. From now on, you can finally just breathe easy. I love you.